Hello and welcome to HelpYourMath.com. In this video, we're going to look at the notation used for logic and connecting simple statements. Okay, so the notations. First, simple statements are usually denoted with single lowercase letters, traditionally P and Q. The next one would be R if there was a third simple statement. Um, and one thing to keep in mind is that simple statements don't have negations in them. So if there's a sentence that says, I do not like coffee, the simple statement would be, I like coffee. And then you would just use the negation to negate that, to, to indicate that. So simple statements, just those simple statements as we've seen before. Okay, so for a few examples, we're going to look at the notation, then we're going to look at some examples, and we're going to have P be the statement, I get paid Friday, and Q is going to be the statement, I will go dancing this weekend. So two simple statements, but let's look at some notation. So all of the connectors have logic symbols associated with them. And if you watched my videos on set theory, you might remember the notation we use in set theory. You might see a connection between the and and the or um, with what we saw in set theory. So the symbol for and or the conjunction looks like that. And you might recall in set theory, it looked like that. So it's basically like the same thing. It's just now we have a point instead of a nice rounded top. Or the disjunction, oops, oh, sorry, that's not right. That looks like a check mark. There we go. The or looks like that. It kind of looks like a V. Um, that's the disjunction. The not, the negation symbol is a tilde. So it's just that. And uh, the conditional is a, a single arrow. And biconditional is an arrow with tips at both ends. Okay, so just to look at some examples, if P is the simple statement, I get paid Friday, and Q is I will go dancing this weekend, then not P is I do not get paid Friday. P or Q, right? So we, with notation, it's important we remember which one this is. This is the disjunction or. So if we're going to write the disjunction or, it would be I would get paid, I get paid Friday, or I will go dancing this weekend. This is our conjunction here. This is our and. So this one would read, I get paid Friday and I will go dancing this weekend. Then we have our conditional. If I get paid Friday, then I will go dancing this weekend. Now, this is one conditional. This is the first one we've seen where the order matters, right? For the or or the and, it didn't really matter which one we put first. But for the conditional, it does. This means one thing versus if Q, then P. If I go dancing this weekend, then I get paid Friday. That has a different meaning than the conditional above it. And lastly, I get paid Friday if and only if I go dancing this weekend. And remember, if you're lazy, not lazy, if you're smart and want to save ink or lead, you can write this as IFF. You don't have to write out the full if and only if. So these are the notations. We want to make sure that we're familiar with them. Let's look at some, some additional examples. Now R is going to represent it is cloudy, and S will represent I will go to the beach. We're going to write each statement using symbols. So we have, I will not go to the beach. This is the negation and the negation of the statement S. So we would say not S. And that's how we would represent this sentence using logic symbols. If it is cloudy, then I will not go to the beach. We have an if then, that's a conditional. And the first part of it is it is cloudy. So we're going to say R. Then I will not go to the beach, not S. So if we break this down, this is a conditional R, then not S. Okay, it is not cloudy and I will go to the beach. So here we can break this down. This is and, so that's going to be this symbol, the conjunction symbol. It is not cloudy is the negation of R, so we would say not R. I will go to the beach is S. So that's how we would represent this using symbols, not R and S. Now we're going to go the other direction. So we're going to let P represent I am a student at BMCC and Q represent it is Sunday. And we're going to write each statement in words. And keep in mind that these are kind of unrelated statements, so the sentences might not make any sense, and that's okay. Okay, so what does this mean? This is if P then Q. That's our conditional. That's going to be if I am a student at BMCC, then it is Sunday. Usually you put a comma there. I'm sorry I didn't. We'll put the comma in now. So that's our conditional statement. How about this one? This is not P and Q. Not P and Q. So not P is I am not a student at BMCC and it is Sunday. I am not a student at BMCC and it is Sunday. How about this one? Here we have P 
or Q, so that would be I am a student at BMCC, or it is Sunday. In our last example, we have this here. So this would be regular P, I am a student at BMCC. This is our biconditional, if and only if. It is not Sunday. I am a student at BMCC, if and only if. It is not Sunday. This has been a video on the notation that we use in logic. Thank you for